Hello, pray and share warriors. I don't know, my phone just like, my phone does not have a lot of battery. It should have enough. should have enough. All right, well, I hope you had an awesome Friday. I did. I went and got groceries today. So that was great. Uh, actually, though, I ordered cupcakes and I didn't get as many cupcakes as I wanted to get. I'm going to have to go cupcake hunting tomorrow. I guess I could go by Walmart and get some. I don't know. I like those mini ones. We like the mini cupcakes. That's what we like to have for birthdays. Instead of a big old cake that you have to eat for days, we like the mini cupcakes. You eat a couple and you're done. You're good. All right. Tonight we are going to do Psalm 8. And uh, we are going to pray first, and then we're going to do Psalm 8. We'll do a little bit of study. I've been studying my flashcards for my presentation. I think, I think Monday I'm going to type them out so I can read them better. I don't know whether my printer will take one of these cards or not. I don't know. We're going to find out. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's go before the throne of God and let's pray. We need to pray about a bunch of things that are going on in our country and around the world. All right. Let's pray. God, we just come to you and we thank you, God, because you are the one that is in control and you are the one that is on the throne, God. There is absolutely nothing that you do not know that is going on right this second. God, we just trust you. We put all of our trust in you. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for helping us navigate. And thank you for um, being our strength and our refuge. And our Redeemer and our Healer, God, thank you for all the things that you do. God, we just, we praise you because you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, God. And you are patient. You want none to suffer. You are faithful, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. And uh, we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for uh, the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for... Um, the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to return to you and to repent and to let you reconcile their relationship with you. God, we just pray for all the many disasters that are going on, the floods, the fires, the earthquakes, the storms, all the many things, God, all the many things. That are going on God we just pray we pray that you would meet these people's needs whatever they are God that you would send people to be the hands and feet of Jesus that you would send people to be the loving compassion of Jesus we just praise you and thank you God we pray God for Afghanistan we just pray for protection protection for our military, God, and protection for the Americans, protection for the people that have been the interpreters, and protection for the Christian Afghanistans, God, that want to get out, that do not want Sharia law enforced upon them. God, we just pray for a safe passage out of there. We just pray that they would be protected, that our military, that our military leaders would start doing what they're supposed to do, that our administration would start standing for our military and protect them. 
send protection for them, send more people, take our base back over so that we can get people out. Even a civilian could have come up with a better plan. Even a civilian, God. God, we just pray for these people. We pray for people that have lost loved ones. We pray for these these families that lost their loved ones, their military and um, in the military and these people that lost their loved ones, these Afghanis that lost their loved ones yesterday. God, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. And for the other people that have lost loved ones, we pray for peace, comfort, and strength too. We pray for all the people that are sick with COVID and other things. God, we just lift them up to you and pray for healing for their bodies, miraculous healing, restorative healing, God. Make their bodies as new as they once were before they got sick. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. Let's get into Psalm 8. Let's see what's in Psalm 8. I want to just hit myself in the cheek with my Bible. This Bible is so much heavier than my own. I do like the study aspect of this one. All right, the heading under this says, The glory of the Lord in creation. To the chief musician on the instrument of Gath, a psalm of David. So this is another psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Oh, there's a song, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I think it probably comes from this. Because some of the verses that I looked up said majestic. So, all right, let's read what the study part says about this. In exaltation of the majestic name of the Lord, is the refrain that both begins and ends the poem. It does. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That was the beginning and that was the end. While the primary emphasis is on the excellence of God, a secondary emphasis falls on the worth and dignity of those created in God's image. God created us in his image. He also recreated believers. Okay, so that's all the study part. I don't know where to go from here. I think I'm just going to flip something open and read it. All right, well, this is good. Let's read the triumphal entry. The triumphal entry. I talked to a friend today and the promise is starting I guess in a week or two, they're fixing to do Tech Week, and so they are getting they are getting ready. So, the triumphal entry—that's one of my favorite parts, and it is in Mark 11. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them. Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied 
on which no one has sat, loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside of the street and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road and others cut down leafy branches from the, t the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David. Wow, we just got through reading about David. That's never a coincidence when you just flip your Bible open and you just start reading something. It always ties into what you've read before. That comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around on all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers. All right, this is a scene from the promise too. Um, and the seats of those who sold doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. And then he taught, saying to them, It is not written, My house shall not be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. When evening had come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and that and you will have them. And the next part is forgiveness and prayer. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. We must forgive. If we want our sins forgiven, our trespasses forgiven, then we must forgive others. Uh, Jesus' authority question. Then they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to him. And they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one question. Then answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, 
If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, they feared the people, for all counted John to have been a prophet indeed. So they answered and said to Jesus, We do not know. That's in the promise too. And Jesus answered and said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. So all, all of these things were in the promise. I worked for the promise for 27 seasons. And in 2018, God shut that door. And it really broke my heart. But you know what? I see why. I see why now. I couldn't be sitting here doing this. I couldn't be sharing the gospel. I couldn't be sharing your, God's truths. I couldn't be homeschooling our son. I couldn't be volunteering for Unbound. There are things that I couldn't do if I had a full-time job. So I see, I see why. I see why, I understand why. And sometimes when God closes a door, he opens up another one. And he wants to bless us for his obedience in allowing him to close the door. But sometimes it does hurt. All right, so Mark 11 is what we read tonight. And I thought that went really well. Hello, my friend Josie. How are you feeling tonight? Are you doing okay? Those itches. I already ate dinner. I need a drink of water. And my first moo latte this afternoon from Dairy Queen, and it was so good. Oh, I love those during the summer. They are so good. You're okay. Are you feeling stronger? I hope so. so. My day was great. I had to go get groceries. That was like my highlight today was to go get groceries. got to give Seth. I'm doing two birthday parties for Seth tomorrow. One bowling one and one eating one. It's going to be interesting. My fan plugged in. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I'm trying to plug my fan into the wrong thing. Um, Anyway, so, all right, well, it is time to do a salvation message. Josie, I read Psalms 8, which wasn't very long, and I read Mark 11, but I already read both of them. Now I'm going to do a salvation message. I don't know which one I want to do. I think I'm going to do this one. I really like this Evan. Um, you have, is he, is he sick? Does he have the, you know what? Or does he just have allergies? Because those haven't gone away. All right, we'll pray for him in a minute that he gets better. I need double fans. I'm, I shut my door to my office and now I'm, sweating. Okay. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16. So this is the E-band. E-band E3 resources. Out of Tennessee. The gold color represents God. Oh, had a bad sore throat. I 
vet? Did he have drainage from allergies? The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. We'll, we'll pray for him in a minute. Okay, the next one on this band is um, black with a white question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. Well, the first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, here is the answer. The red the red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his Son that he sent his son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So the next one is white with red. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10:9. This mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if you have not, let's pray this prayer, and I will leave a space where you can repeat after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the green color, the green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the area of growth. So if you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Savior, then the heart on this bracelet represents the greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. And the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. 
Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then we have the water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then you have the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then you have your world with a cross in the middle. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins. When you trust in him, tell as many people as you can. So that is the E3 resources of salvation. So if you said that prayer and invited Jesus to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his son. So today is your spiritual birthday. And if you did that, then please put your name in the comments so that I can pray for you. And we are fixing to pray. And um, I've got to go feed Seth. Unless Ricky's going to feed him. I don't know. I never know. All right. Well, let's. Josie has a few prayer requests. Her son and her niece. Um, does Haley have the same thing? Is she sick? Is Haley sick too, Josie? Yes, she is. Okay. All right. Well, we will pray for them. And we will pray for everybody else. And then I got to get off of here. Oh, she has a sore throat too. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that other things are still going around. Even though there's COVID, I'm sure like allergy infections and sore throats, strep throat, I'm sure all those are still around. All right, well, let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray for these people. And strength for you. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to get over that. It's really hard. It's very draining on your body. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just uh, come to you. And we want to lift up Austin to you, God, that you would heal his body, that you would give him strength, that you would alleviate this pain in his throat, God. We pray the same thing for Haley. She is sick also, God. We just pray for healing for her too. And that you would alleviate the pain that she has. That you would just give both of them strength, God. That you would give Josie strength in her healing. In her continued healing, God. That you would give her strength. We pray for Mr. Mike. We pray for strength for him too. Just takes a while to get over this stuff, God. And we just pray for restorative healing for Josie and Mike and for Jace, that they will, that their bodies would be just as good as new when they get over this. God, we just pray for uh, Josie's brothers and her sisters and their families. We just pray for protection and blessings and provision, God, and for her children and their families, God, we just pray for the same, for protection and provision and blessings. We pray for Josie and, and Austin, and for Mr. Mike and the boys. We pray for protection and 
provision and blessings, God. We just pray that you would give us a boldness to go out and to share your truth, God, to stand for truth. When we see things that are not right, God, that we would stand for your truth and that we would share the gospel of Jesus everywhere we go with boldness, that as we go out and do errands and things, God, that we would shine the light of Jesus, that we could be the love and compassion of Jesus that maybe not everybody sees, and maybe not everybody feels appreciated, God, that we could give them that appreciation as we go. And God, we just pray. We pray for all the people in Afghanistan, God. We pray for our military. We pray for um, the people that helped our military. We pray for um, our American citizens that are trapped there, God. We pray for the people that the Christians that want out, God, that do not want to be part of Sharia law. We just pray that there would be a path for them to get out, God, that it would be miraculous. It would be just like the parting of the seas for the Israelites, God, that no one, no one would be able to, de to deny that it was your mighty hand that did it. God, we just pray for protection for them. We just pray for all the disasters that are going on, God. We just pray that you would be with the people, that you would meet their needs. We pray for other people that are sick. We just pray that you would place your healing hand upon their bodies, God. We pray for Josie's co-workers, that you would give them extra strength to do her share of the work as she recovers, God. And we pray that she would be able to get back to work soon. And that she would feel like going back to work soon, God. And we just pray, God, for, for your guidance and wisdom in our lives. For you to help us to um, order our steps for what you would like for us to do. And we just, we thank you, God, for all the many things that you do in our lives. For sending us a Savior like Jesus that is our King. That is our Prince of Peace. That is our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings, God. Thank you that he has overcome all evil. So we don't have to worry, God. All we have to do is trust you. Because through Jesus, we have already overcome. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want everyone in the world. Okay. God, we just pray for everyone in the world, too, God. We just pray for a Jesus movement to sweep throughout our country and into the world, God, that cannot be stopped, that people will come to the knowing knowledge of Jesus and that they will be saved, God. So much uncertainty, so much evil right now, God, but we know, we know who has overcome all the evil. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, I think I got everything. All right. Well, my friend Josie, my sister, my sister Josie, and my pray and share warriors, I am going to do the blessing from God. In Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So we all need some peace. I need some sleep. I am not sleeping good. I need a good night's sleep tonight. So if you pray for me, pray for me a good night's sleep because I have a lot to do tomorrow. And uh, anyway, so you all have an awesome rest of your night, an awesome tomorrow, and much love and cyber hugs till I see y'all again. Good night.